Part four, ritual of the white cloth. Pure, bright, white cloth. Find or buy a piece of pure, bright, white cloth that has never been used to cover your altar. Again, spread the cloth over the altar with an attitude of reverence and welcoming and thank the cloth for aiding you in your quest for spiritual light. Thank the plants whose fiber comprise the cloth and thank the creator who made those plants. While spreading the cloth over the altar, meditate on the message of the cloth and its whiteness. Cloth. Cloth teaches us the power of working together and of weaving the various aspects of our lives into a firm and pure whole. The whiteness reminds your spirit of its original purity and devotion to reflecting the light just as your ancestors did. Know that the principle of original purity and peace as embodied in the, in the white cloth is within you. You are the white cloth. With this firmly in your mind, joyously spread the cloth over your altar. Know that now your altar, your life, and the world are blanketed by your white cloth. Give thanks. Thank the creator, the cloth, and yourself for choosing to spread light. Ritual items. You are now ready to place various ritual items upon the altar. For an idea of the kinds of items traditionally used, see the list in the appendix. Whatever items you choose, never forget that they are divine. They have their ultimate source in the great creator. Every altar should have a few basic items, such as a clear glass or crystal bowl for water, fresh fragrant flowers, generally white, a, a picture, pictures of a particular person who has translated, passed on, white candles, daily food portions, and incense. Each of these items represent a basic message. Briefly, candles, because they are always standing upright emitting light, remind your spirit of how you stand for light and for brightening and warming others. It also attracts ancestors who also strove to enlighten others. These lights serve as beacons that guide helpful beings of light to your life. If you stand as the candles do, these spirits will be drawn to strengthen your light. Food. The food reminds us of how we depend upon and derive nourishment from our environment, of family, friends, spiritual practices, etc. to grow strong and to serve as nourishment for others. Foods that the ancestors love are outlined in the appendix. As the mystical number of the Igun is nine, it is traditional to offer foods and offerings in groups of nine. Nine cups of rum, nine pieces of fruit, even nine candles. The cover of this book provides an example of offerings of this nature. It is customary to place both traditional foods and ancestor-specific foods on the altar. Traditional foods include akara, deep-fried bean cake, moin moin, palm oil, emu ope, palm wine, obi abata, Yoruba native cola nuts. Ancestor-specific foods refers to the specific foods that your ancestors loved to eat here while on earth. Perhaps they liked a certain liquor, grits made a certain way, a particular candy or sweet or special tea or fruit juice. Just remember not to add any salt to the food as the ancestors are not to be fed salty foods. Incense. The incense causes us to recall the uplifting and uprising of prayer and up and sweet words and thoughts. Also, incense smoke, like us, is visible for a while and then vanishes into invisibility. Yet, although it becomes unseen, it still creates a lingering influence in the environment. Today you are visible, alive on earth. Tomorrow we shall all become invisible and pass on, to, on into spirit. Yet, like the ancestors that you are inviting back, we will be able to influence the seen world. Other items. If you have other items that you wish to place on the altar, meditate on them and let their lessons and messages speak, teach directly to you. Often an ancestor may want an item simply because it was something that they enjoyed while alive. Comply. Completed shrine. When the shrine is completed, 
stand firmly in front of it and lovingly light the incense and candles, always remembering what they represent within you. You are, in fact, lighting the increase and candles within your spirit that you will commit to regular use of the shrine for wisdom, prayer, meditation, upliftment, and dedication to Africa. Be aware that the items draw the spirits to your altar like a spiritual magnet. Your prayers and meditations will be the current that drives it. The more you pray there and use it, the stronger its power will be. If used only in crisis moments, the altar would not be as potent. It's nice to visit the altar and your spirit guides just because your heart so moves you.